This lesson is looking strictly at right triangles and right triangles only. We're going to use a lot of Sokotoa, and we are going to be doing some dreaded story problems. Sorry. First of all, this is on your master formula sheet, um, so you can look at it there. I know you already know all this, but Sokotoa, you know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. You know, cosecant is the um, reciprocal to that. So that none of this should be new to you, but it is there. Um, you are going to be looking at these triangles right here. Um, this is a right triangle. Right triangles you know as having sides A, B, and C. You know that C has to be the hypotenuse. That cannot change. Um, I know this is kind of elementary, but I always tell you that the, I always tell people pretend this is an arrow, and the arrow, the right angle, points at the hypotenuse every single time. A and B can be switched around. It does not matter which leg is A and which leg is B. Um, but here's what I want you to notice. This right here is angle alpha, and what I want you to notice is that angle alpha is opposite of side A, and angle beta is opposite of side B. So, and that has to stay that way, okay? So if you switch A and B around, then your alpha and your beta need to be switched as well, okay? So here is our first um, problem that we're going to do. I'm going to give you some information. I'm going, I, you need to know that this is a right triangle. Sokotoa can only be used on right triangles, no other kind of triangles. So I'm going to draw my triangle here. And um, I am going to say that this is side B, which is 3 inches. And um, I gave you angle alpha. This would be side A then, and I don't know it. I give you angle alpha, which is 43 degrees. I do not know side C, and I do not know ang or, um, angle beta. Okay? So, first thing that you need to do is you need to find all the missing sides and all the missing angles. I am going to find beta first, um, because it's very easy to do. Um, obviously, there's 180 degrees in the triangle, so I will go 180 minus the 43 degrees for angle alpha, um, minus the 90 degrees for the um, right triangle in there. And if I do 180 minus 90 minus 43, angle beta will be 47 degrees. Okay, so I've got that as 47 degrees. Okay, then the problem is I need to find my two sides, okay? I am going to start with side A. It does not matter which side you start with, but I am going to start with side A. When you use Sokotoa, you always want to use an angle and two sides. And when you use an angle and two sides, that's three pieces of information, and you can only be missing one of them, okay? So, for instance, if I'm trying to find side A, that's the side I'm missing. And then I need to pick an angle, and I need to pick um, another side. Okay, so I'm going to pick this angle, and then clearly the only other side I know and I have to pick is this side because I already have my piece of informa mi missing information. Okay, so if I look at angle alpha, from angle alpha, A is opposite, okay? This is obviously the hypotenuse from angle alpha, okay? And again, I'm working from angle alpha. It matters which angle you're working from. The hypotenuse never changes, but A is opposite of alpha, and then this side um, would be adjacent to angle alpha, or next to angle alpha. I am not using side C in this case, so it doesn't really matter, but you can see that you're using an opposite and an adjacent. So you want to think about Sokotoa and figure out which proportion has an opposite and an adjacent in it, an O and an A, and that would be tangent. So I'm going to go tangent of the angle, which in this case I know to be 43 degrees, is opposite, and opposite has to be in this case A, over adjacent, which is in this case 3, okay? And then you want to solve for A, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, and I'm just going to simply go to my calculator and put it in. Now, you need to make sure that your calculator, though, is in degree mode. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I will check my, uh, my mode. I am in degree. If you're not in degree, please switch it. Okay. And let's see. Uh, my screen's not keeping up with me here. Um, so I needed to put in 3 times tangent at 43 is what I needed to put in. 3 times tangent at 43, and that gives me 2.798, let's say, 
0.798, and my units in this case are inches for my sides. Okay, so there's side A. Now, I know that you could do A squared plus B squared equals C squared to get side C. I understand that, but I am going to force you to do it with Sokotoa here just to get us some practice. Okay, so um, this time I am going to use angled beta just because I have it. And it happens to come out to be a perfect measurement. If I had rounded angle beta, I probably wouldn't choose it. I would probably stick with alpha. Um, but in this case, I'm going to choose angle beta, okay? So I want to find side C. That's the side I'm missing. So now I have an angle and one side. I have to pick another side that I know the value of. I am not going to choose side A because I have rounded that answer. I know I can, but I'm going to choose not to use it since I have one that I don't need to round. So I'm going to choose side B, side C, which is my missing piece, and angle beta. So again, an angle and two sides. So from the angle, you always are working from the angle. This side over here now, in this case, is opposite for the green, and um, this is the hypotenuse, okay? So I have an opposite and I have a, pot, a hypotenuse. So you need to figure out which trig proportion has an O and an H in it. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I would go sine at the angle, which in this case is 47 degrees, is opposite, which is 3 inches, over my hypotenuse, which is C. Okay, now I want to solve for C, so I need to have that in the numerator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by C. Those will drop. And I will have C times the sine at 47 equals 3, divide by sine at 47. And that's what you're going to put into your calculator. So C is 3 divided by the sine of 47. And you can put that into your calculator. And C should come out to be about 4.102 inches. Okay, so there I have found all three sides. All right, moving on to number two here. You have to draw your triangle first. Um, side B is two inches. Side C is five inches. I do not know side A. Alpha has to be opposite of A. Beta has to be opposite of B. So I'm going to fill the angles in. Now, I'm not going to do this whole problem because I don't think you need me to, but I know you can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out a. I'm not worried about that. I want to figure out one of the two angles first. Okay, so if I find one of the two angles first, let's say we're going to find alpha first. So, again, you're always going to pick an angle and two sides, and you can only be missing one of those two pieces of information. So I have to pick two sides. They have to be two sides I know since I already have an unknown. So I'm going to pick this side and I am going to pick this side. Clearly can't pick side A because I don't know it. Um, and I probably wouldn't choose to pick side A anyways because even if you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared and find side A, it's a rounded value. And try to stay away from rounded values if you can. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but stay away from, th from them if you can. Okay? Anyways, from angle alpha, this we know is the hypotenuse because the right angle points at it again, see? And then from angle alpha, this would be adjacent or next to because side A is the one that's opposite of it. So I have an A and an H. So ka toa would be cosine. So cosine of angle alpha is adjacent, and your adjacent is your 2 over your hypotenuse, which is 5. Whenever you're missing the angle, um, what you need to do on your calculator is to go inverse cosine of two-fifths. And that's what you're going to do to spit that out. And when you do inverse cosine of two-fifths, um, angle alpha will come out to be 66.42 degrees. Okay? And obviously, if you figure out that alpha is 66.42, you can take 180 minus 66.42 minus 90 to get angle beta. And if you want to check that, beta is going to come out to be 23.58 degrees. I am not going to take the time to solve that right now. All right, here we go. A right triangle contains a 25-degree angle. If one leg is 5 inches, what is the length of the hypotenuse? This one actually is a little bit tricky because there's actually more than one answer. And here's why. Okay, 
all it says is that I have a right triangle, that it has a 25 degree angle. I'm going to put that 25 degree angle up here. And one leg is 5 inches. Here's the problem. Does the 5 inches go right here? Or if this is 25 degrees, does the 5 inches go down here? And you don't know. And it doesn't tell you. And that's why there actually has to be two answers in this case. So the question is, what is the length of the hypotenuse? So this is what I'm wanting to find up here is the H. Okay? You do not need to find every p piece of um, missing information, any, all the sides and angles. You don't need to do that in this case. All you have to do is find the H. So clearly, you're going to pick the 25 degree angle. Here's the angle you're going to pick. You're going to pick this side, which happens to be next to or adjacent to that 25 degrees. So this is an A. And then clearly you have the hypotenuse, which is H. Okay, so if you have an A and an H, again, you have cosine. So cosine is um, the A and the H. So cosine of your angle is adjacent. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, and if I like if I continue solving that one, I would need to multiply both sides by h. And then I would divide by cosine at 25. So h is 5 over cosine at 25. And then you can sit and type that into your calculator. 5 divided by cosine at 25 should come out to be 5.517. And your units are in inches here, so make sure you label those. So that's one answer. The other way you do it is if this is your angle, then this is opposite down here. And this side right here is obviously the hypotenuse. So you have O and you have H. And if you have O and H opposite an hypotenuse, you need to use sine because of Sokotoa. So I will do sine at 25 is opposite over hypotenuse, which I don't know. Okay, again, I will multiply both sides by H. Those will cancel. I will divide by sine at 25. Okay, so in this case, your H will be 5 over sine at 25. And if I take 5 divided by sine at 25, I should get 11.83 inches. And I need both answers in this case because I don't know which way is right. All right, angle of elevation and angle of depression. We need to talk about that quick. Um, both of these are measured from right angles. You need to know this. They are both measured from a straight horizontal line. So angle of elevation is measured from looking straight across at something and then up. That, dis that difference between looking straight across at something and then up. Angle of depression is the difference between looking straight across at something and down. So these are going to be horrible pictures, but let's say you're here and this is the sun. Okay, you're looking up at the sun. This right here is the angle of elevation. Not this. That's not what I want. This right here is the angle of elevation. Notice it's measured from a horizontal line. Always measured from a horizontal line. Okay? Angle of depression, on the other hand, is also measured from a horizontal line, but you're looking down at something. So let's say this is you, and you are looking down at somebody's pretty painted toenails um, next to you. Okay? These are horrible pictures, but... Okay, someone is standing away from you and you notice they have beautiful toenails, so you're looking down at them, okay? This is the angle of depression in here. Again, notice it's measured from a horizontal line, okay? Has to be measured from a horizontal line, and that is something that people really mess up on. All right, this is talking about a trail, and I am going to draw a picture here. So, I'm starting at a trail. Um... I have a hotel, I'm at a hotel right here, and I'm going to hike up the trail, and I am going to move, so I'm starting down here, I'm hiking up the trail, I will move 14,100 feet up that trail until I hit the scenic overlook. Um, this is the right angle. 
The question is, what is the angle of elevation? And again, angle of elevation needs to be measured from the horizontal line. So this is the angle of inclination or the angle of elevation. That's the question that I'm needing to find. The problem is it doesn't directly give me another side um, of the triangle, but I can figure it out because this, the hotel right here, is 8,000 um, feet above sea level, and the overlook is 11,000 feet above sea level. Sea level's down here. Okay, so if you move from here to here, you have moved 3,100 feet above sea level. Okay, so that distance is 300 or 3,100. All right, now that I know that, it's pretty easy to figure that out. Obviously, what you're missing is the angle. You need to pick two sides. You're going to need to pick two sides that you already know. Um, from this angle, this would be opposite. The right angle points at this one over here, so this would be hypotenuse. So I have O and H, which is sine. So sine at that angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And then you'll enter that into your calculator because you're missing the angle like this. And your angle should come out to be about 12.7 degrees. Okay. All right, couple more here. Um, this one, you have a radio tower. So this is what's shaking down here. You are standing here. The pictures are the hardest part to this, you guys. You have one of those radio towers, you know what I'm talking about, that have the little flashing lights at the top, okay? This is what I'm referring to. Um, and you are standing at a distance 300 feet from the base of the tower. So you are right here. This will be 300 feet. Okay. Um, you are looking up to the top of the tower, and the angle of elevation right in here is 40 degrees. And you are looking through a transit. A transit is one of the, the, those surveyors that look through those little tripod things. That's called the transit. So the transit, in other words, this distance in here is two meters, okay? Well, what that does is it obviously affects the height of the tower. So what we're going to do is we're going to find this, this side of the triangle right here, okay? And then in the end, we're going to need to add two meters to that distance so that we can get the height of the tower, okay? So we've got the little triangle. Clearly, here's our angle that we have. This side right here, the one I need to find, is opposite of that angle. And then this side right here is adjacent to the angle that I circled. So I have opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So I will set this up like this. Tangent at 40 degrees is opposite over adjacent. I will multiply by 300. Those will clearly drop, and then I'm just going to put into my calculator 300 times tangent at 40. And when I put in 300 times tangent at 40, I will get 251.73 meters, okay, because my units are in meters. But then I need to add those two meters for the transit because that um, the person is not measuring from ground level. They're measuring from eye level. So I need to add the two meters for the transit. And obviously that will affect my answer here. And I will get 253.73 meters. And that will be my answer. All right. This one here, we have um, a building. My drawings are so lovely, I know. At the top of the building is a statue. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Um, you are making two observations um, 400 feet from the center of the building. Okay, so you're going over here, and you're going 400 feet. And you are first looking to the bottom of the statue, and that angle of elevation is 45 degrees. But then, 
if you stand in the same spot, which by the way is still 400 feet, and you look to the top of the statue, that distance, and remember, angle of elevation has to be measured from the horizontal line. So this is not the second angle of elevation like people think it is sometimes. It has to be measured from the horizontal line. So it's that whole angle that is 47.2 degrees. Okay? Your job is to figure out how high the statue is. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to do this. You're going to figure out, first of all, um, this side right here, which is the green X. And then I'm going to figure out this distance, which is the red X. And I think you can figure out that if you subtract the green minus the X, you will get the height of the statue. So the height will be the green minus the red. Okay. So here we go. First of all, let's start with the green um, triangle. And so when I do the green triangle, here's my angle. This is my opposite from that angle. This would be adjacent from that angle. So if I have opposite and adjacent, I will have tangent. So tangent at 47.2 degrees is opposite over adjacent. Multiply by 400. And that one will come out to be 431.96 feet. Okay. Now I'm going to deal with the red, and when I do the red, I will have tangent at 45 is x over 400. Same thing, still opposites and adjacents and hypotenuses and all that good stuff. And you will get 400 feet, okay, when you type that into your calculator. So obviously the height of the statue is the difference between those two um, heights. So the statue will be 431.96 minus 400, which of course is 31.96 feet. Very tall statue. All right, and here's our last problem right here. Okay. And actually, you know what? I am not going to do this problem with you on the video. I am going to save this problem and do this problem with you in class is what I am going to do. Okay, so we are going to call this lesson good, and we will chat with you later.